Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs, cats, real humans, fake humans and the AI bots of the internet. I am Ancient Swan, you don't know me. I know you don't on account of this being my very, very almost first ever video-ish. Who am I? I'm a map maker who loves making maps based on history, one of which you're looking at right now. If you're a history fan, then you will likely love these maps too. Today I'm very happy to be taking you beautiful people on a journey. So strap yourselves in, because we are about to delve into the disastrous saga that is the Darien scheme. Picture it. Scotland, the late 17th century. A time of kilts, bagpipes, castles and haggis. But amidst the misty moors and rugged landscapes, a group of Scots decided they were tired of tartan and they wanted a taste of the exotic. And who wouldn't? I live in Scotland and look out the window now, you know what I see? Clouds. You know what I saw yesterday? Clouds. Day before that? Clouds. I've just checked my phone. Guess what's tomorrow? Correct. Clouds. And what could be more exotic than a tropical paradise? The fact that this particular tropical paradise, known even today as one of the most inhospitable places on earth, still filled with deadly snakes, disease-ridden swamps and more than enough mosquitoes to fill a sandwich, was the tropical paradise Scotland chose to place its colony is not a moot point, as we will come to learn. Welcome to the Darien Scheme, an unsuccessful attempt backed by the Kingdom of Scotland to gain wealth and power by establishing a colony on the east coast of Panama. It was to be founded in an area known as the Gulf of Darien, and the plan was for the colony to establish and manage an overland route to connect Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. A great plan, right? It is actually, if you know nothing about the Darien. This was a time before the Panama Canal, and control over that narrow stretch of land between the oceans would have netted Scotland a tidy sum. Unfortunately though, Scottish people living in the 17th century did not know the things that Scottish people living on the internet know today. They did not know about the Darien Gap. You see, ladies and gentlemen, even today, like now at this moment, right now, today, the Darien Gap is still known as maybe the least hospitable place on Earth, not counting obviously bits of planet Earth under water or inside volcanoes. Do you know geography? I don't know. Here's a map. Blue bits are water. It's a map of the Americas. The big bit in the north is North America, and the big pointy bit in the south is East Germany. See that tiny narrow bit of land where the two big bits connect? That's the Darien Gap. Total rainforest. Air there is made up of wetness and flying protein. You dare not breathe because of the mosquitoes. You cannot breathe because of humidity, so no need to worry about the mosquitoes. And also, don't touch the snakes. Do not even look at a frog. Even today, and I am not lying, there are no roads that connect South and North America. And I quote the gods of Wikipedia, there is no road, not even a primitive one, across the Darien. Colombia and Panama are the only countries in the Americas that share a land border but lack even a rudimentary link. Even today the land is so determined to kill you, the road workers are still just like, nah. This is where Scotland put all its money and hopes. Where dreams go to die, and laughter is only currency worth anything. See my friend, Scottish people have a thing for adventure. I myself have been on many a trip, some to real far out places. And us Scots have figured out that if we are going to fail spectacularly, we might as well do it in style. So, armed with nothing but optimism and a few barrels of Scotch whisky, he set sail for the new world, ready to conquer a land that didn't even want them in the first place. Now, I must say, that's not actually true. The colonists definitely took more than just optimism and whisky. They actually took quite a few other things with them, including many things for trade with the, lo with the locals once they arrived, thinking, what a great idea it will be to sell and trade with the people already there. Surefire way to success. How could the local people not love what we've got for them? We'll be heroes. 
Scotland took wool. The other stuff too, of course, but like, wool. You see these hardy pioneers had spent their entire lives wrapped in wool, purely just to get through the Scottish summer, and had absolutely zero comprehension of the climate where they were going, taking wool to sell and make clothes for people who were already half naked for very good reason. Wool melts in the rainforest, that's a true fact, do your own research. Anyway, before they even set foot on the sandy shores of Panama, disaster struck. Turns out, exploring the depths of the Atlantic in the 17th century was about as safe as exploring the deep web today, or so I've been told. Disease ran rampant through the cramped quarters of the ships, claiming more lives than a particularly brutal Saturday night in Glasgow. And let's not forget the storms, oh the storms! It was like Mother Nature had a personal vendetta against the Scots, and she wasn't about to let them get away. But did our intrepid adventurers let a little thing like impending doom stop them? Of course not, they sailed on, fueled by sheer stubbornness and the promise of riches beyond their wildest dreams. And so they arrived in Panama, ready to stake their claim on land make their mark on history. Too bad, history had other plans. The first 1200 settlers arrived in November 1698 and it very quickly becomes clear that this colony could not sustain itself. Mismanagement, yes. Infighting, double yes. You see, building a colony from scratch is no easy feat, especially when you're up against hostile natives, sweltering heat, and a distinct lack of basic survival skills. But did that stop the brave travellers from trying? No, of course it didn't. But you see, Scottish people are not meant for hot weather. I know this, because I am one, and I've been hot, and I was not a fan, and I did not do well. So by March 1699, 270 people were already dead. Death rate was now at 10 per day. So five ships were sent out to nearby colonies to find help. Four of them returned with nothing except for a message. The English had placed a trade embargo on the colony. By order of the king, nobody was allowed to help the Scottish colony. And let's not forget about the Spanish, who were less than impressed by a bunch of Scots traipsing around their backyard. You see, before the Scots had arrived, the Spanish had already been there many times, and had already settled many of their own colonies in the New World. They didn't need some Egypts turning up and disrupting their sea of red blobs with an annoying wee blue blob. And then, because the Spanish were such an important power at the time, the Dutch also then refused to trade, through fear of upsetting the Spanish. The colonists were on their own. No help, no food. It was like a truly awful episode of Survivor, only with more whiskey and less bear grills, because he wasn't born yet. Constant rubbish whiskey jokes are not just me being an idiot, I'm serious. At this stage, there was not much left to pay people for their work. Food was gone, money was a concept. Alcohol was the only reward left to give. Done some work, here's some whiskey. People got drunk, a lot. If you've ever been drunk in a hellishly hot place, you'll know how bad it can be. Who needs dehydration when you can have dehydration plus? with double dysentery for only half the dosage. To make things worse, the settlers found out that the Spanish were planning to attack. And so, knowing that they were weak and could not hold off the Spanish army, they packed up their suitcases and left, abandoning the colony to the Spanish. Adios amigos! Goodbye! See ya! Of the four ships who set sail, only one of them made it home, with 300 survivors. The 1200 who had left for a new life, three quarters of them were dead. So far, because it's not over yet. Because very unfortunately, whilst the first group of colonists were leaving, the second group was already on its way. Unperturbed by this distinct lack of white people pacing sweat, the second group got on with it for a very short while. The second group were plagued by the same disease and malnutrition as the first group. 
the natives were also still not impressed by the will stuff. However, this second group were a bit more prepared for an ass kicking than the first group. This time, when they found out about the Spanish plans, they took initiative. The Scots attacked the nearby Spanish fort and were successful, driving out the Spanish army. This, as it turns out, was to be an independent Scotland's last ever military victory. So despite taking names and handing out beatings, the colonists were left much weaker than before. The Spanish returned not long after and blockaded the colony. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. After just one month, the Scots were forced to give up and return home. The Darien scheme had a 71% death rate. As the Company of Scotland was backed by approximately 20% of all the money circulating in Scotland at that time, its failure left the economy in absolute ruin. Scotland was bankrupt. The Darien scheme, its failure, and the country's now lack of pennies, is seen as one of the main reasons for the 1707 Act of Union when Scotland became one with England. Everything has been fine ever since. And so despite their best efforts, the Darien scheme was doomed from the start. The colony collapsed faster than a soggy shortbread, leaving behind nothing but a trail of broken dreams and empty bottles of Glenmorangie. As the Scots licked their wounds and sailed back home, they couldn't help but wonder, was it all worth it? The answer, my friends, blowing in the wind. And also, no. The answer is no. It was not worth it. So here's to the brave souls of the Darien scheme, whose grand ambitions were matched only by their spectacular failure. May their legacy live on as a cautionary tale for generations to come. Never trust a pasty white man selling wool in 40 degree heat. Best laid schemes of mice and men and all that jazz. Anywho, enough of that. You might be asking some questions about the map. I wanted to imagine Scotland's attempt at building a colony had been successful. This map was based on Google Earth images and DEM height maps of an area no known as This map was based on Google Earth images and DEM height maps of an area of Panama now known as Puerto Escoches, which means Scottish Harbour to those not blessed with a Spanish tongue, as well as the 1699 map of the Bay of Caledonia. This game starts around New Edinburgh according to the 1699 map. I did have my own city I built on this map to show you in this video, but I formatted this system recently and it's one of the now more than one things I forgot to back up. So that was nice. Anyway, look at it. It's beautiful. How about some map information? Okay, sure. Theme. Not East Germany. Climate. Sometimes 11, sometimes higher. Latitude. Has that. Buildable area. Has an area. Is buildable. Outside connections, road, other one, other one, other one, not the wet one. Natural resources, this much. Terrain, a very hilly map with some flat areas. The map is of course free to download from the Paradox Mod site. You can follow the link in the description below. That's it, that's all. I hope you enjoyed your wee history lesson for today. I hope all y'all understood my English. I'm a barely functioning Scotsman, and our English is infamously bad, and we don't care, we don't. At least half of us aren't even trying. However, you may have noticed that I did provide some subtitles, so I hope that helped a wee bit. But anyway, like and subscribe. Oh, oh I almost forgot. Next week, if I can call it that. Don't know when it will be, let's just say next time. We're doing the Mongols. And another Skylines map I made based on another long gone city from history, the Mongol capital Karakorum. So stay tuned then if you want to hear me talk shit about the Mongols. That can fella, he was mental. Anyway, like, subscribe, etc. Every time you don't do it, a wee part of my soul dies. That's it, I'm out. Have a great day. Peace, love and chips. Cheerio!